I also want to think about some more perceptual effects. And we've thought about perceptual effects, I think, with color and the fact that sometimes you can perceive things more easily than others. Uh, so in terms of like sort of slow processing ability, if I told you I want you to find Waldo in uh, this image, that would take you quite a while to process that. But if I gave you this, uh, you could probably process very quickly where Waldo was. So when I talk about fast uh, processing, I'm talking about pre-attentive processing. Your brain is doing automatically without you having to give it any conscious thought. So these are things that happen in less than 200 milliseconds of visual stimulation, and they get performed in parallel across the entire visual field. So this is kind of amazing. Our, our brains are doing this sort of parallel computing process where we're just able to perceive things, again, kind of in the, in the whole, um, but we're also able to see the parts. So get ready. I'm going to show you something really quickly. I don't know how well it's going to translate to video because you might not have the best uh, connection speed um, and I, I don't know how the video is going to record, um, but I'm going to try and show you a slide really quickly and then I'm going to ask you uh, to think about what you've seen. So ready, set, what did you see? So if you were focusing on the screen, you might have been able to capture some pieces of it. Of course, since it's a video, you could go back and try it again and see if you're able to see it uh, very quickly. Um, but usually people can do a couple tasks e extremely quickly. They can tell me um, what colors were on the slide. They can tell me the approximate number of uh, different uh, things of different colors. Um, and then they can usually tell me where something uh, different was on, on the screen. Maybe uh, you will be fast enough that you could pause the video uh, right on that slide and, and see exactly what was there. Um, otherwise, we can talk about that in synchronous class together, uh, what was actually on the slide and what you were able to see. Colin Ware, who's a data visualization expert, says that um, an understanding of what is processed pre-attentively is probably the most important contribution that visual science can make to data visualization. So this is important stuff to be considering when you're making visualizations. Um, and what are some of these pre-attentive features? So one thing that we're able to capture pretty quickly is color, hue, um, and I think you were probably able to see that when I flipped through really quickly. Um, intensity, sometimes we can tell intensity. I guess I don't know if you'll be able to tell. This one is less intense. Uh, size, we're able to capture pre-attentively, so you might be able to pick out that one. Um, orientation, your brain would be able to tell exactly where on the page the one that is not oriented the same was. Clustering, our brains can capture clusters really quickly. Um, and then length, uh, again, sort of identifying, ooh, that one's not the same length. We can usually do that in just milliseconds. Um, we can also detect uh, things that are different based on curvature, uh, based on closure, based on intersection. So if the two things are intersecting in a different way. Uh, termination, we can capture that uh, very quickly. Lighting direction, um, I don't know that I can do this quite as quickly, but I can pick out the one that has different lighting direction pretty easily. Um, and then I, I don't have a GIF here, so I don't have an actual flicker, but if there was a flicker, you'd be able to determine that as well. We can also do target detection. So is something there or not, presence or absence? We can do boundary detection or grouping, again, going back to those Gestalt principles. We can do region tracking. Uh, we can do counting and estimation. Again, with that uh, slide that I showed you really quickly, you probably had an idea of how many blue objects there were versus how many red objects. Maybe not the exact number, but you could give me an estimate. Uh, so if we needed to do attentive counting and figure out how many threes there were, that would take quite a while to figure out. But if I showed you this slide, I think you could tell me, uh, even just looking at it for a, a very brief moment, about how many threes there were. Um, and again, if I went back and gave you more time, you could really tell how many there were. Let's just go through some of these colors. So here's how color uh, would be processed pre-attentively. Um, and Kieran Healy has a practical introduction to data visualization, specifically with ggplot, but I think the examples pertain to visualization and other tools as well. So he shows how uh, the density impacts some of these pre-attentive processing. So if we have um, 20 data points, 
on our page, maybe it's a little bit easier to determine the, the thing that is different based on color. If there's more points, uh, I think we can still see it, but maybe it takes like a millisecond longer. Uh, we've got our shape or curvature again. And let's see, with n equal 20, I think it's pretty quick to find it. Uh, with n equal 100, uh, I've already called it out here, but I think it would take you longer to find uh, the different shape with a larger number. And then if we throw together shape and color, uh, can you pick out an object that looks kind of like different from the rest here? I definitely have some blue circles all over the place. I've got some orange circles all over the place. I've got some blue triangles all over the place. I only have one orange triangle. So I can sort of still pick out that one that's different, um, even when I've got both shape and color as pre-attentive uh, processes. Uh, again, that's going to get harder as the number of points increases. I've, I've called it out here, um, but if, if you didn't have the call out, I think it would be difficult to pick that out. So now I'm going to show you uh, these four images, and I'd like you to pick out uh, what's different in each of them. And there's two things that are different um, from the rest in, in each of these groups. So I think uh, I can see the easy ones, uh, that and this and this. Uh, I think this one is a little bit tougher. Um, I don't know which one you would really pick out first as the different one. Um, we've got our, our easy. Our difficult was a different orientation. We've got our easy. The difficult, again, was a different orientation. We've got our easy. And then the one is that is difficult, this is a hue that's not seen anywhere else. I think that would be really hard to pick out. Um, uh, this termination, I think that is easy to pick out, but this different angle, that one is, is pretty tough. So there's, there's levels of pre-attentive processing. And then here's another few examples of the interaction between these kind of gestalt effects and uh, some of these perceptual impacts. So if I have things grouped in a particular way, I'm probably going to see, uh, you know, the groupings in, in this way. But if I add color, now they're kind of fighting with each other. Is, is this the grouping? Or is this the grouping? And maybe that's uh, what, you, what you want to have happen. Uh, if I do something like this, I'm maybe um, thinking more about the, the, the orientation in rows. Um, if they are laid out more um, organically, uh, I don't have that same kind of um, hierarchy. And then if I, if I color things, then they really stand out. Uh, if I had uh, some data like this, I probably am going to be grouping things that look the same or things that are on the same row. Uh, but I could really emphasize that row effect by connecting them together. And if I wanted to emphasize the column effect, I could add color. Uh, here I've got um, similar shapes, and I might be able to use that law of, uh, what was it, law of continuity um, to try and connect these things together. But it's going to be easier for me to do that if there's an actual line to help my eye follow them along.